Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy day after Canada Day, but it's a celebration we can continue all weekend. So, and with traditions, I uh, actually happen to be the last one in here this morning, so I will be lighting the candle and pouring the water. <laughs> it's great to be back. Uh, <laughs> let me see, how does this go? <laughs> God, light of the world. Jesus, living water of hope. Holy Spirit, power divine, we praise your holy name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I also with you. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked on this land in their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. So we respectfully acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe's people, specifically the Chippewa, Ojibwe, Kudua Tommies peoples, past, present, and their emerging leaders. We also respect their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. May we promise and challenge ourselves to make truth and recon reconciliation real in our community of faith, here and in our daily lives. Bethune and our sister church, Knox United, are a safe place for all people to worship, regardless of your race, creed, age, cultural background, or sexual orientation. May we honor one another and honor life itself. Well, it's wonderful to be back after my three weeks vacation. So that takes care of the uh, 21, 22 vacations. Now I enter into my 23, 24 vacations. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm with you for the full month of July. So there you go. I don't know if that's a blessing or a joy or a concern for you, but we'll go from there. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to say the whole service. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've missed this. I've missed this. This is so much fun. Oh, it's just like being with my family. We are family. Yes, absolutely. I've got all my brothers and sisters with me. <laughs> well, we're bringing back, um, prior to COVID, we used to do something called Pancakes with Margaret at Fairburn. Uh, nursing home and then when Margaret passed away we kind of let it go for a little bit but, but I, I missed that gathering of, of friends and communities so we decided to have uh, pancakes with Margaret at Wimpy's in Huntsville and COVID kind of put that out of the picture for us for a little bit but now we're bringing it back so if you're available this Wednesday feel free to join us at Wimpy's in Huntsville for pancakes or whatever else on the menu your little heart desires so we'll be at Wimpy's Huntsville at 10 o'clock so if you can be there excellent if not Watch for us next, uh, the, begin the first Wednesday of um, August, okay? Awesome. Are there any other announcements or joyous concerns you'd like to share? Nancy? In the garden, there is now lettuce if anyone wants to pick any lettuce. Wonderful. Barb? And the first Sunday of the month is birthday Sunday. We've got quite a crowd for July. And we have Samantha, Joy, Seth, Jonah, Deacon, Brennan, Wendy, Murray, Stan, and Noah, and um, the Thune Family Church is birthdays this month as well. And the Thune is 149, and Murray, I'm not sure, he turns 90 this month on his birthday. Wow. So make sure you stay because there's a fabulous dessert made by Louise for us too. <laughs> Bruce. Uh, just a little uh, side note, we're moving toward, what's the date for the walkabout? 20 seconds. You know, walkabout requires ice, we always do this, and each of these is a roll-up of a plastic bag and the instructions so you don't wet yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> There's a little yellow cap yeah. inside. And it's rolled up, and uh, you're instructed to fill it about half. Don't fill the whole bag, you'll be sorry you did it. And make sure that the cap goes on tightly, or you'll be sorry again. And then, on the day of the walkabout, it would be great if you could remember to bring this. After it's filled, put it on a cookie sheet. Put it in your freezer, and freeze it flat. I was going to say store it someplace, but that's not really either. 
Anyway, um, on the day of the walkabout, it's uh, it's essential that we have ice. If we went out and bought it, I haven't bought ice by the bag, but I bet you it's four dollars. Maybe the amount of ice that we use is significant. So you'll be making your contribution, even if you're not able to attend for a full day's visit to the walkabout or to uh, Diane's place for the. <coughs> These are here, and, and you're invited to take along something, one of them maybe, or two if you want, and then remember to bring it along when you return. So that's very welcome. Thanks, Chris. Marley. And I believe that uh, Barb has more to say about the bazaar. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Next Saturday is our UCW's annual <laughs> summer bazaar. So it's from 10 to 2. We've got pies, homemade pies. We've got a bake table, craft table, a treasure table, and a luncheon. So make sure you come. Mm -hmm. And uh, donations would be accepted too, as well. Awesome. Thank you. <coughs> well, if we have no other announcements or joyous concerns to share, let us join in our gathering hymn for more voices, number 191, What Can I Do? for the presence of God. Ready to satisfy every thirst. Come to find a caring touch. Ready to know grace in this community. Come together, full of welcome, ready to drink deeply in God's presence. Come, let us worship God together. Let us pray. Water is a blessing, and so is your word, O God. May we open our hearts and minds to your spirit. May we drink it in. May it flow within us and around us and take up residency in our souls as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, let us now uh, come and sing of a wonderful love, hymn number 574. <laughs>
Now for our scriptures for today, and the first one is uh, Psalm 13. suffer anguish in my soul, and be so grieved in my heart day and night. How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look at me and answer me, O God, my God. Give life to my eyes, lest I fall asleep in death. Lest my enemies claim to have prevailed against me. Lest my foes rejoice at my downfall. But my trust is in your mercy. Let my heart be joyful in your salvation. I will sing to you, O God. Because you have dealt so lovingly with me, I will praise your name, O God, most high. reading this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Rewards. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes God's messenger, because he is God's messenger, will share in his reward. And whoever welcomes a good man, because he is good, will share in his reward. You can be sure that whoever gives even a drink of cold water to one of the least of these, my followers, because he is my follower, will certainly receive a reward. Here we go, connecting with life. There's no wrong answers. <laughs> Recall a time when you made a small yet significant act of welcome to someone outside of your social circle. What was the outcome for you and the other? Well, we welcome you back. That's true. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I'm under contract. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I was. Well, go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. Just a. Uh, Move this along. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get this over with. Right? Well, uh, as part of my work as a Rotarian, I welcomed a, uh, uh, a student from the Philippines and his wife and small child. Picked them up at the airport, and we drove out of the airport, and he continued to be amazed at what Canada looked like, and the fact that uh, there were people still on the street after dark, some of them women, and he couldn't believe that it was that safe. But he went on to complete his master's degree. You say, what was the outcome? He went on to Purdue and did his doctorate. And uh, the last I heard, he was a professor on the U.S. East Coast somewhere, and I lost, lost track of him. So uh, he was amazed, I was amazed, and he did well. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Very nice, yes. I was welcomed into a social circle which was kind of nice, meeting new people and uh, being able to have new friends as well. Absolutely. That's one, that's one of the things I love about Baseville is that you're always welcomed into something. Would you like to come to the writer's group? Would you like to read stories to the kids? Would you like to join lions or lionesses? And every, it, just everything, it, you know, we, you're, always, you're always welcomed into something or something or to some place, and every morning we all gather in the main foyer before we, you know, come into the sanctuary for the service, but, you know, it's a welcome. Spark it barks at each and every one of you, that's your welcome. <laughs> so. Since you mentioned the writers group, I have to comment on how much they love coming to the monthly luncheons. Oh, yeah. They obviously feel welcome here. Some of them at first said, well, 
even just peeking in the door. I don't know if I should look in there. I haven't been to church in a decade. <laughs> <laughs> and they're quite amazed at the welcome they get. Yes. Yes. Another comment happened that morning. When you tell them about what... Um... Oh, I was standing behind a man who... he It was his first time at the writer's group, so his first time here. And he looked at that ecumenical poster we have right at the end of the table, and he pointed to the Hindu scripture, and he said, that's blasphemy. Oh. And, but I'm sure he was joking, but I don't know him well enough to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I made a, an appropriate joke or comment about it. But I obviously, think I, think, I, think he was, joking. I think he was joking, but obviously it made an impression on him. <laughs> yeah. And then your comment was, that's quite acceptable. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, though, someone outside your social circle, circle, mm -hmm. uh, Wendy's writers group. I was amazed when they came in. There was a friend of mine who I haven't seen in about four years. Oh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> so when you say outside your so social circle, I mean, we were laughing about this uh, at the family get together that we went to a few weeks ago. That. Um, one of Nancy's cousins, who we haven't seen for 20 years, now lives about maybe a dozen kilometers from us. Oh. And we had no idea that she and her husband had moved oh. up there. Mm. So, no. nice. what does outside your social circle actually mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's that whole game of, uh, was it uh, six degrees or yeah. seven degrees of separation? Yes. Yeah. That you can find a connection to almost anyone anywhere in the world. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's quite mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. The circle gets bigger. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was walking to the morning dog walkers that walk around. I don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was walking to the dog walkers, right? And they, the word got out that I was not a stalker. <laughs> and, and, and they welcomed me. And everybody knew my name. I didn't know their name. Uh, I know their dog's name. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know their name. But they, they welcomed me. And, and they'd see me walking by myself. And they said, you want to walk with me? Great. Yeah. You'll need to get one of those fun little leashes that they have that yeah. look like yeah. a oh, yeah. baseball dog yeah. at the end of this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start carrying treats. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a warm feeling, isn't it, when you get invited into mm -hmm. a different circle of, of friends and uh, such a great learning opportunity and, and a great way for the person welcoming you in to show love to another. And it's just such a, it's a give and take really. Like you both walk away better for the experience, I, I hope. So it's and wonderful. they aren't strangers anymore. Exactly, they're not strangers anymore, for sure. I think the word significant uh, in this presentation here is one that applies to, and it's been mentioned already, it's the lunch lunch. That is significant. So many people. Uh, they're not affiliated with this particular building, although they certainly share in what the building represents. Absolutely. And that's good. And our 10th anniversary is in September. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 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 Nice. Awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's awesome. That's wow. awesome. Food. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of food. That's a lot of soup. <laughs> when when uh, I moved to Huntsville, and I didn't know anybody in Huntsville, but yet <clears throat> I started going to the seniors' things and to the walking group and stuff, and everybody's welcomed you. Yeah. So you just feel like you've got an extended family. Absolutely. And then how do you jump up and go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All these family commitments. Yeah. Well, back to Lunch Munch for a little bit. Uh, lunch Munch reaches far and wide. I have been uh, gifted many a time after Lunch Munch with anything that happened to be left over. And this last Lunch Munch, I took two hamburgers home for Mum and Alan to have for supper that night. Well, Alan was just thrilled because he loves hamburgers. Mm -hmm. And Mum was just thrilled because she didn't have to come up with something for supper. <laughs> <laughs> but she has received soup and uh, the odd sandwich or two and desserts uh, as I've been able to uh, join you at Lunch Munch since my retirement from school, and it just reaches, it reaches everywhere. So, and, and the knowledge of it reaches beyond here as well, so it's fantastic. Well, we have a Ministry of Music for you from Michael and Nancy, and uh, on that note, Michael also uh, gave to me a travel drive with quite a few of their hymns on it that they have uh, sang and recorded together, sang and played. 
And so I, and with, with the um, idea to pass it on to my mom's home church of Forest Home. So they've been enjoying Michael and Nancy as well. Oh, so nice. reaches far and wide. <laughs> far and wide. You're on tour. It seems that way. <laughs> Without infecting anybody. <laughs> favorite rock up the back of our house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. You don't get a sense that it's actually, it's enormous. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, you graciously welcome and love each of us exactly as we are. And you model how we should be with each other. May you be patient with us and help us as we seek to understand what your true welcome and your hospitality mean for how we should be in our communities. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome. To greet hospitably, with courtesy, to be cordial, to accept with pleasure the occurrence or presence of. Lots of meaning behind that little word, welcome. And I'm sure each of you here, as you have shared already this morning, have had experiences of feeling welcome or unwelcome in groups. I personally have experienced both. Now, mind you, not in a church atmosphere, but at one of my previous workplaces. It wasn't a very pleasant experience. And it made it very hard to get up and go to work every day. However, I persevered and eventually broke into that work bubble that had been so hard for me to burst. And in fact, now, we are all really good friends. Today, while recognizing that many churches seek to be welcoming, we will try and deepen what it means to welcome. In our scripture from Matthew today, we heard the conclusion of a section of Jesus' teachings that are sometimes known as the missionary discourse, and it speaks of the cost and the rewards of discipleship. Imagine yourself in the arid 
regions of ancient Israel. And that made water a very precious commodity and a very powerful symbol. Life depended on water and welcome. Hospitality was the greatest obligation and there were strict social conventions regarding hospitality in the traditions of all the people in the region. A household was obliged to offer any visitor or traveler, known or stranger, food and water, and the opportunity to wash, shelter, and protection. A messenger or servant was to be treated with the same hospitality as the person or persons who sent them. One welcomed not just an, an individual, but the community from which they came. So in essence, a host became integrally bound with those that they welcomed. And this is the world in which Jesus was sending his disciples. And while Matthew's Jesus promotes the idea that those who welcome a, a disciple also welcome Jesus and God, he prepares them for the possibility that they will not be welcomed. And in this time of the early church, it could be very risky to welcome followers of Jesus. Risky to the host and to the disciple. The reward might well be persecution from the Roman authorities or the wider community. Disciples are numbered among the prophets, the righteous, and the vulnerable little ones. And while it's not clear if Matthew is referring to distinct roles within the community or, or whether these are simple alternative ways of describing those sent out as missionaries, it implies that times are still perilous for Christians. The reliance on the hospitality of the people they encounter and the welcome they receive is in sense the key to, their, to the success of their mission. As a child, just after the T-Rexes and everyone else disappeared, <laughs> I can remember a group of boys. Every summer, every day, there'd be a group of boys that went past our house. We, at that time, we lived on Concession 2. We've never moved, but the addresses have changed. So, and the road, uh, our road took you directly down to Bass Lake Provincial Park. About oh, about two or three miles at that time, before we hit kilometers from our place, uh, there was a Christian camp, a boys' Christian camp. And so we'd have groups of boys walking up our road, heading to Bass Lake to go swimming, which I found really ironic, because if they took about 25 giant steps, they would be in Lake Simcoe. But I don't know, maybe Bass Lake was warmer and nicer. I don't know. But anyways, it was an outing. So if any of my member of my family happened to be outside, we would hear the shouts from the boys for a drink of water. Can we have a drink from your hose, please, ma'am? Or, sir, could we please have a drink from your hose? My mom and dad routinely allowed these young fellows to come onto the, off across the road onto the property for a nice cold drink of water from the hose. Soon, my sister and I were doing the same thing. Not quite a glass of water, as in our scripture, but the meaning was the same. Yesterday was Canada Day. We celebrate Canada every day. But this past month, Canada's population has surged past 40 million people. The latest statistics from Statistics Canada, figures, uh, their figures reveal that this growth is fueled by immigration. This is an exciting milestone for Canada, said Anil Aurora. Statistic Canada's chief st statistician. That is quite a mouthful for a sentence. <laughs> I tell you. Should have thought that one out a little better. <laughs> they went on to say it is a strong signal that Canada remains a dynamic and welcoming country, full of potential. Now I'm not going to get into the politics of this with you today. You either agree or you disagree on immigration. But the nightly news likes to remind us that much of much like what the disciples faced, 
many of these new Canadians face the same challenges regarding welcome. A cup of water or a drink of cold water from the garden hose. These images share with us the image of compassion, received and given. It invites us to trust God's wisdom and grace. They urge us to welcome and tend to others. They beckon us to open ourselves to receive gifts of compassion brought by others and ask how we practice giving welcome and receiving welcome as a spiritual disciple. So may we be open to giving and receiving a cup of cold water on our own spiritual journey. Amen. Let us join in singing When I Needed a Neighbor. It's number 60 in your hymn book. Education. Growing up, most of the religious leaders she knew were male ministers. When she had the opportunity to encounter female ministers, she felt inspired and knew she wanted to inspire and empower other young girls in the same way. I always ask God, do you really love us as women? I need to do my best as a woman to challenge the dominance of men, Eunice says. Coming from the United Methodist Church, Eunice is one of the students who received a scholarship from the United Church of Canada's partnership with the United Theological Seminary in Zimbabwe. <clears throat> she shared that she wanted to express her humble gratitude for, his, for this opportunity. When it comes to inspiring young women, Eunice shares a few words. If I can do it, they can do the same, she explains. We have power. It's society at large that assumes we don't take part. Often we're behind the scenes. The strength and determination of leaders such as Eunice inspires us all. Your mission and service gifts, how, gifts empower young women like Eunice as they grow to become leaders for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. And thank you, everyone, for your um, offerings, whether either on the plate or through power, or through all that you give to our little church and our community and to those around us with your time and your talents. Thank you for everything. God bless. <coughs>
and share in another's thirst. May we pour out grace upon grace, so that God's love truly has no end. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we move now to our prayers of the people, and as you know, because we are a, an online forum, we don't take names um, out loud anymore within our congregation. However, after the service or at any time, you're welcome to be in touch with me, uh, email, text, phone call, any way that you want to reach out. So please don't hesitate to do so if the need should ever arise. Let us pray. God of those who feel welcome and those who feel shut out, help those who feel aware of your love reach out to those who do not so that love becomes real. Encourage us with your steadfast love to be content and gracious, and even admit when we have failed to truly love. Our actions have not been what we intended. Our words have failed us, and so we open our hearts to listen for your sound of welcome and embrace. Sprinkle our silences with your love and grace. Pray, O oh God, for a spirit of welcome and acceptance in the community that bears your name. Open our doors and hearts to all who come seeking. We pray, O oh God, for all who wander without a home because of economic turmoil or political unrest or social or familial estrangement. May we be led to places and people who extend hospitality and touch needs in life-giving ways. We pray, O oh God, for all who yearn for cups of cold water to quench thirst for water, relationship, or sacred space. We pray for the health of body, peace of mind, and wholeness of spirit. We pray, O oh God, for those of us and others who are in positions to offer holy welcome, space, hope, and companionship. We pray for the compassion and courage to embody the kind of welcome extended to all through Christ. We pray in your most holy name. Amen. Well, a little fun before we go. Yesterday was Canada Day. Who knows how old Canada is? What anniversary did they celebrate? <laughs> well, let's just put it this way. Six years ago, we hit 150. Oh. <laughs> I, see, I see all these little wheels going. Oh, I can't do this. That's too hard before we have cake. <laughs> Okay, here's one for you, for all you history buffs. What was Canada called 300 years ago? Virginia, Canada. Oh, very well, 300, 300 years ago. Three, just 300. Just 300. New France. What is Canada the largest producer of? And don't say Nanaimo bars, <laughs> ketchup chips, <laughs> or butter tarts. Maple syrup is up there, but what are we the largest producer of? Wheat. Yes. Yeah. Agricultural products. So the Canadian prairies are one of the most important global pro uh, producers of wheat, canola, and other grains. Okay. For you hockey fans. <laughs> Baseball was just too easy. How many NHL teams are there in Canada? Last time I watched these lives. Toronto doesn't count. <laughs> seven, yes, seven, seven. There are seven NHL teams located in Canada. From the date of their first NHL season, the seven teams are the Montreal Canadiens in 1917, the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1917, Vancouver Canucks in 1970, Edmonton Oilers in 1979. Calgary Flames, 1980, Ottawa Senators, 1992, and the Winnipeg Jets in 2011. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think
here's a baseball question for you, because I can't leave out baseball. What was Margaret's favorite baseball team? Oh, hey. Hey. Oh. <laughs> and they beat Margaret. They definitely beat Margaret. Come on, Margaret, shine down on your Jays. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I should tell you, though, uh, the last time I was in St. Catharines, I was um, able to um, get myself back to the cemetery in which Margaret had been buried and uh, went over and uh, had a little visit with her, and uh, she's doing great, and she actually, um, when I went back to my car, I found a crushed beer can beside it, so I thought, she's looking up for even the <laughs> <laughs> That's our girl, Margaret. Yes. <laughs> well, our departing hymn for this morning is O Canada. today for our service. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your long weekend. Play safe, um, be happy, and celebrate this wonderful country in which we have the honor of living upon. And uh, we're going to sign off with you now. However, the folks here in the sanctuary are going to be watching another video from the Skit Guys, and it's entitled Check the Box. So if you're on YouTube, check the box with the Skit Guys. Farewell. <laughs>